<coughs> A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but to receive a spirit of adoption, through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs of Christ. If only we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. St. Paul is trying to remind us that by virtue of baptism, we were seen by the gift of the Holy Spirit. We become children of God and we gain that character that is going to identify us by virtue of the Spirit that was given us that we are not only children of God, but also we can and we are brothers and sisters of Christ. And that's why we can say, by that power given to us in our heart, that God is our Father. Because if Jesus came to this world, and He asked us that when we pray, we pray our Father, and when he rose from the dead, he said, I am going to my father and your father. That really gave us that great opportunity and also privilege to be called sons and daughters of one father. And if we are children, because by the adoption that we receive, by the immersion of the dying and rising of Jesus, we call it the Paschal mystery, we are now cleansed from our sins. And we are given that privilege that now that we are sons and daughters, reconciled with the Father, that we are now going to be heirs with Christ. And what is the inhabitant that all of us are going to have in Christ? The promise of eternal life. But there is one condition, St. Paul said, that if we want to reign with Him, we need to bear the cross. If we suffer with Him, and his suffering is that we continue to bear witness of his great resurrection, that we are witness of that great privilege that we, as people of God, not only we suffer because of our physical illness, but we suffer because of the mistreatment that we have because of him. But if we suffer with him, we have also the glorification of the Christ who died, and he's still dying in his members of his church to continue to save souls, is the Christ that he is risen. And that's why we are his witness of his resurrection. Because each one of us has that promise that this life will lead us to the sacramental times of the church, will lead us to the glory. And that's why we said that we expect Christ to come in glory. So his glory will be ours. As we go to celebration of the Eucharist tonight, let's ask the Lord Jesus, who now identify, identify himself with us as our older brother, as we together, sons and daughters of the eternal Father, that we have the courage and the privilege to call him Abba. We too, who have to endure the cross in this life because of the tribulation that we endure because of his presentation love that he has for the world, and especially by the insult, by the mistreatment that we get because of him, we one day we achieve that glory, that goal, which is the promise of eternal life. St. Paul said at the end, only we suffer with him, so that we also be glorified with him. So this suffering of this life, dear people, is not going to be forever, it is for some years. But the glorification, eternity is forever. And that's why it is very important that when we compare what we undergo right now and what is, what is waiting for us, there is no even resemblance. And so, let us really remain firm in what we believe. Let us really be witness of Him in the world so that when
when he comes, and he will come as the professor in the thing that will come in glory, he will take us with him. So where he is, that glory he is in glory.